Hi, so today is Monday, January 16th, 2013. This is Linda Conley, um, one of the people working to interview people for the Hopkinton's Oral History Project. Um, I'm here at the Senior Center, and I'm with Karen Adelman, who has lots of connections to Hopkinton families of the past. And um, so this information is going to be part of the town's memories. Um, and again, this is sponsored by the Historical Commission and the money from a, a grant through um, historical, the, H, the Historical Preservation is making this whole thing possible. So we're happy to talk to you. So um, can you tell us about your time in Hopkinton when you, <laughs> when you first moved here and when you lived here? When I first moved here, we, we came to live with my grandmother who lived on School Street. She was part of the Cheneys. And there was my grandfather and grandmother, Laura and Melvin Cheney. But you're going to need to tell us been, what year. What oh, year is this? Yeah. Would have been about maybe 1943. And because uh, I, I was born in 40, so I can go by my age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they had a big apple farm. And then just down the road was the Kimball area. That was my grandmother's family. And then Next door to us, up was uh, my uncle Harry Cheney and Ora Cheney, my cousin. So we kind of had our little neighborhood there. <laughs> it seemed like everywhere I went, I was related to somebody. <laughs> wow, that's really, really, really neat. So they had apple, there was an apple farm? There was apples everywhere. At the time, there were apple orchards. At one time, it was, they had gotten an award for the foremost apple grower in Massachusetts. And they used to take the apples into Boston by horse cart, and they'd be gone two or three days. And my grandfather would bring back new varieties of, of fruit. And, and uh, one time he brought a piano home for my mother, my grandmother, and she taught herself to play. <laughs> wow, wow. But uh, it, was, it was kind of a gentler time, you know. No matter where we went, we were safe, because, of course, it was a relative everywhere. And uh, it just seemed to be a simpler time. We didn't come into town much, but I did go to school at uh, Center School. I remember Mrs. Phipps, she wouldn't, she had no truck with electronic bells. She had a cow bell and she'd go out on the porch and she'd ring that bell and you were expected to come. <laughs> and that was in the first grade? That was um, first, third, up to the fifth, and then I think after that she had to give in to the electronic bells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I remember there was a teacher, Mrs. Darling, and there was a teacher, Mrs. Love, which we didn't get the connection back then as kids, but now it's kind of funny. I remember coming in to the cartoons at the Congregational Church. That was about our biggest entertainment in town. Cartoons? Cartoons, Mickey Mouse and like that. That's, they would hold them on Saturdays for the kids. And I remember the across from where Colella's is now, there was the old post office and a big dry goods store. And you'd go up these big steps, it was all in one big building. Go up these big steps, wooden steps, then the floorboards would creak as you walked around, you know. It was, do you it was recall, nice. do you know the name of that dry goods no, store? No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised when I came back and it wasn't still there. I, I didn't know it was gone. Yeah. And uh, pretty much most of my memories center around Whitehall and School Street. And my cousin was Laura Cheney, so he was entertainment. We used to go shopping in Milford once a week in Aura's Hearse. <laughs> Which I wouldn't do now, but as a kid, I thought it was a big adventure. <laughs> Can you t talk about Aura? Because he's pretty. Aura memorable. was he was great for kids to grow up around. He was the original hippie, had long hair, and he'd keep it out of his eyes with a bobby pin, and he had stories galore. And he taught us um, how to build an igloo in the winter, and told us about the Indians, and he made Indian remedies. There was one remedy he had he made using several different types of bushes. You could drink it and it would cure a cold. You put it on a sore, it would heal the wound. You could <laughs> Is this the person, too, that collected all kinds of Indian artifacts? That or? was his father, okay. Harry. Harry. Okay. Harry was big into history and he was a, like a lifelong member of the, his, of the National Geographic Society. In fact, they came to his funeral. 
And but he had this big long shed, the big old apple house, what they used to store apples. Wow. And it was just lined with cases. And he had snake skins and rare stones and artifacts from the Indians and there was I mean you could spend all day in so there. So this is you that's your uncle then. Yeah, my uncle, my my grandfather's brother. And did they live all of their lives in Hawkington? Yeah, they yeah. grew up right there. Yeah. Well, the Cheneys, no, the Cheneys started off in in Milford. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of them are buried in the old Purchase Cemetery. Mm -hmm. But very young, they came here mm -hmm. to Hopkinton, and they settled on School Street. And he and his brothers built the the big house that we all lived in. That's gone now, but was right on the top of the hill in, in on School Street. And it was like Victorian style, big Victorian style house. No running water, no lights. We, we grew up with candlelight and, and uh, the kerosene lamps. I remember having to polish those globes. I hated that. She didn't want one streak on them. <laughs> and uh, we had, in those times, people delivered things. There was a baker, and I cannot tell you what the name of that baker was, but the baker came once a month to, do, to deliver bakery goods. Groceries are delivered, and I believe that came from, there were three grocery stores downtown. I believe the one that delivered to us came from the National. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it, it was just a great town. Lehman's, uh, Howard Lehman still owned the farm up there, and his cows would come up in pastures near us. And my cousin Gail and I thought it was great fun to go down and put the cows in different pastures so he couldn't find them <laughs> until my grandfather caught us and then we didn't do that anymore. <laughs> he was the gardener for Lehman yeah. for years yeah. and years. I can remember him saying that he never said he got old. He always said the hill got longer every year. <laughs> I swear they're putting more miles in that hill. <laughs> And, uh, but that's what, probably why you didn't have to go to the town that much if people are delivering what you needed. Yeah, you know? yeah. We didn't own a car. We, Aura took us into Milford once, once a, every two weeks or once every month or something like that. And uh, one of us kids got to go each time we took turns. And there was um, nine of us at one time staying at my grandmother's in the mid 40s it was when housing I guess was very hard to get our parents were working in other towns and, and uh, so we all grew up together even though we were cousins we grew up like brothers and sisters and to this day we think of ourselves as brothers and sisters and uh, but my grandmother just you know she did her ironing with the old irons that you put on the stove and heat it up and uh, scrub most of the clothes on a scrub board but I can always see her sitting and writing poems. She wrote a lot of poetry, and uh, she she loved to write. So, what was her what was her name? Laura, che Laura May Kimball Cheney. So she was a Kimball. She was a Kimball. Name was a Kimball, yeah. and that's that's an old, old yeah name yeah of the about uh, maybe four or five generations. Yeah. They started off in New Hampshire and Vermont and moved down here, and. Uh, we used to take long walks that were great about teaching us about the flowers and the different animals and that there were. And uh, my grandmother would make rag dolls. I can't remember ever having a bought doll. But we never thought of ourselves as poor. And uh, I was pleased that when I came back here, you know, maybe about 20 years ago now, during the marathon, I went down to have breakfast at the center school and the cafeteria was almost exactly like it was when I was there. <laughs> so it made me feel at home. <laughs> and, uh, oh. Oh, Brown and Smith's ice cream. They gave you the biggest ice cream cone. There was where, no where way was that? Brown and Smith, and what, that's yeah. where um, the pizza place, Bill's Pizza is now. Okay, and so what kind big, of a store was that? It was supposed to be a drugstore, but mostly we thought of it as an ice cream luncheonette. Yeah. It was a U-shaped counter, and you could sit there and have lunch or coffee or whatever. It was a meeting place. And this Everybody is again, the, there probably there in the 1950s? Do you know how long it was there? I, it was there in the 40s, I know, possibly the early 50s. Yeah. But I wasn't living here in the late 50s, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. where whether it was there or not. 
but everybody went there for ice cream because they gave you the biggest serving of ice cream. They never weighed it out. They just dipped it out and gave it to you. And it was someplace, if we were somewhere else and we wanted ice cream, we went to Brown and Smith. <laughs> Came into town for that. And, uh, of course, the... Uh, I can remember School Street was a long street. It started up, uh, up almost up to the nurseries that are there now. And then we would take our sleds and we'd take a running leap and we'd slide all the way down School Street, all wow. the way down and on to Pond Street before you started slowing wow. down. Wow. And no cars hardly then at the time. You know, you could slide with not any problem and you'd walk back up. And these days I'd be complaining, but back yeah. then it was fun. Yeah. But we could slide all the way down School Street without ever meeting so a car. So School Street called called that for for the Bear Hill School that used to be there. That Bear Hill building. School was down at the corner where Pond Street and School Street meet on that corner lot. Mm -hmm. And it was a school for years, but when I was a kid it was a Grange Hall. And we, my grandfather took care of the Grange, the, the hall, and so I would go down with him before every meeting and I would help him heat the place up and sweep it out and open up the windows if it was during the warm weather and everybody would go it was a it was a meeting place everybody went we had square dances and strawberry socials and corn huskers and when the people when the adults were having their meeting we kids would play run and play around outdoors and uh, sometimes we'd sneak into the kitchen and sit under the table while the ladies were cooking and get a little bit of extra snack but we looked forward to those times. Everybody would come. So that was the former schoolhouse that then turned into a grain. Do you know what happened to the building in the end? It burned. It did burn? Yeah. Yeah. I it have burned. seen photos the of school the school. had yeah. burned and they rebuilt it and then the Grange Hall burned. And uh, unfortunately a lot of buildings back, you know, they used to burn a lot. Yeah. Because it was a wood stove in there and if it was an ember or something, yeah. you never knew. So that's a grandfather, a Cheney, again, C-H-E-N-E-Y, -E right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so we went, and then uh, I can remember the square dances, and we used to have a lot of fun there, a lot of fun. Everybody would come. I mean, we, relatives would come from far off. Yeah. If they knew there was going to be a Bear Hill reunion, they'd come from many states away to attend the reunion, and that went on for years. And... Uh, did everybody from Hopkinton come, or was it that that section of Hopkinton? The section of Hopkinton. Yeah. Anybody yeah. that had been born or raised or lived in on Bear Hill, that was a Bear Hill reunion. They all came to that. And the Hopkinton Grange was up on Hayden Row, where the Hopkinton Historical Society is now. So they did their own things over there. Yeah, yeah. it was it was a community. Yeah. Sometimes we would interact with Woodville, but mostly it was it was pretty much their community was part way down Winter Street and up School Street to even Spring Street was included on it because some of the people had... And did you refer to it as Bear Hill? If yeah. somebody said, where, you, where do you live, yeah. you'd Bear say Hill. Bear Hill? But we always spelled it B-E-A-R. And since then I've heard it spelled a dozen different ways, you know, depending on who's doing it. But it was always B-E-A-R to us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, actually it probably should have been B-A-R-E because it was named that way, my mother said, because they had a big storm and all the trees were mowed down on it, and there weren't many trees. But when I was there, there was a lot of trees. But uh, we could we could wander almost anywhere up there. There's all where the big houses are up there now was just woods, woods, yeah, land, yeah, and a lot of streams, right? Because it's a yeah. very wet town. There was uh, springs, several yeah, springs. Right, right. In fact, that's what we drank was spring water. And there was a spring just above the house where we kept our milk and eggs and stuff. And we'd go up there and fill up a pail of water and bring down what my grandmother wanted. And it always ran fresh and clear. It was nice. And of course, there was a pond hole and the lakes and different things. So sounds sounds so rural, huh? It was. Yeah. It was. It yeah. really was. But it's still not far from from Framingham, which would no. have been, you know. But the funny thing is, people up there have always shopped in Milford, not Framingham. Milford or Westboro, but not Framingham. Didn't go in that. Didn't Framingham was like, was like a foreign country. Yeah. But Milford <laughs> was almost like part of them. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, 
it I can't, in fact, I can't remember knowing, to me, Framingham was that far off place that had a theater and stuff like that. We didn't go there very often until my dad was in the service in the 40s and he had an injury and he was at Cushing. We used to go to Cushing to see him, but other than that, we didn't go. And then he drove the B&W bus line later, so we'd go over, but usually it was just Milford and Westboro and Hopkinton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That sounds like a great life for a kid. It was. It was a wonderful life for a kid. It really was. And uh, we didn't we didn't have a lot, but we never thought of ourselves as poor. I remember my grandmother used to make peanut butter and marshmallow fluff sandwiches. And I'd take them to school and everybody else would want to trade their lunch for my sandwiches. <laughs> so I never I never thought of myself as being poor at all. Yeah. We just But then you so then you left and you came back. Yeah, my parents, my stepfather had a, he was a machinist, and at the time they, would, they worked on jobs. So he'd finish a job one place, and then he'd go to another job, and we'd move with him. And, but we always ended up back in Hopton, of course, because my grandparents were here. Mm -hmm. And we kids would come for the summer. And uh, I remember um, Howard Larder, or Herman Larder, down at the... In in uh, Woodville, he had the post office and the general store, and he was always good for my, for an ice cream cone whenever we went in there. And he he married a Kimball, so he was a, a relative of sorts. So there was a little general store at the location where yeah, where the post office is now. Yeah, it was yeah. a little general store, and inside was the post office. Wow! So it was kind of a combination. They used to do that a lot, and. Uh, We'd, we'd play, we'd go, to, we went to the Woodville Baptist Church, so we were down there a lot. So there was a lot of interaction in that area. And I can remember the lake has always been in my childhood. Yeah. But I, my aunt remembers when it wasn't there because it came along about 1897 or something, I guess. And, uh, where they created, made dams so that they, yeah. They combined small small ponds to yeah. There was a the there's a natural spring spring under it, and still in the winter time, when it freezes, you can look out and you can see this wet spot right in the middle of it from my house. You can see it, and uh, that's where the, the spring is still under there. It feeds the lake. My grandfather wouldn't let us go out on the lake until he could take the horse and wagon and go all the way across. If the horse would walk on it, then we could go on it. Otherwise, we weren't allowed on it because he said there were too many soft spots. For, oh, because of the spring? Yeah. Wow. wow. It doesn't, there are spots where it doesn't really completely freeze. Mm -hmm. And you have to be careful. Sometimes we'll walk out there and we'll see where um, people have run into these soft spots because they didn't know they were there, you know. I've never heard of anybody getting, you know, going through the ice or anything. And yeah. pretty careful. Yeah. It freezes pretty good. It's a shallow lake. Yeah, it is very shallow. Yeah. yeah. And there's a, still the road is still under there in places. The small island out there still has kind of traces of the old road that went over it. And all the islands are actually hills. <laughs> They're not really islands. So most of them are hills. And uh, that used, to, in fact, the road used to go to Woodville right where the lake is. That's how my grandparents used to go to do their shopping. They would travel that road through to, to Woodville. So interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember yeah, swimming was, in, the, in the lake in the summertime? Not too much. I was never much for swimming, but a lot yeah. of the kids did. Yeah. We used to go out on Lucy Point and picnic. That was a, a great thing to go out on, and picnic out on the, on the Lucy Point. Must be a timer. Yeah, must be on a timer. Motion. Did kids come from other towns to to? Not so much. In, it was in, mostly in just Lincoln? local yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, not so much. And the the side, what we called the side hill across from me, the property across from me, it slopes right down to the lake. I'm on the southern end, across the street from the lake. Mm -hmm. And the people across the street from me, they live actually right at the side of the end, southern end of the lake. <coughs> And on Saturdays and Sundays, everybody that lived around there would go out and sit in lounge chairs or any kind of chair they could find or just lay on the ground. And we'd, we'd picnic and the kids would play and it was a gathering spot. Wow, wow. 
Boy, that's very different than now. Yeah, huh? yeah. Now, and my grandfather always kept it mowed. And I mean, that's been like, he's been doing it for, he had been doing it since before I was born. So it's been like a hundred years that it was mowed and scythed and stuff. Can you, what was the address of, what was the address that you're talking about now, you know? I mean, it was still, it was a hundred, it was 183 Pond Street. 183 always been Pond? 183. And what's that like now? What's that locate that? Is there a... There's a field beside my house, and there's a, the field is still there across the street where it slopes down to the lake, but we're no longer allowed to mow it, so it okay. just grows up. And So uh, you're still in your grandfather's house? Yeah, I moved my grandfather's okay. house. I've got to check that out. Yeah, I moved, I moved in about, when I moved in 20 years ago, well, it was about in 87, actually, that I moved in after my aunt died, it was still the old, the old way that they had built it. This Victorian Which, that you were talking about? No, no. no. Okay. This is a, the Temple House was a small house. Okay. I live in my grandfather Temple's house. The Cheneys lived up on top of the hill on School Street. Okay, all right, I got you. And the, he had originally lived in the house that's across the street from me which is a 17 something house, 1725 or something like that. She has the paperwork on it and my great-grandparents lived there and then when my grandfather was going to get married, they gave him the land across the street where the barn was. And uh, he pulled a, like a, a chicken house, a two-room chicken house over there. And they refurbished it, dug a cellar hole under it. <laughs> and then as the kids came, they added another room, you know. So now it's like a, like a little cottage. It has the kitchen and the living room and then it has a back hall with a bathroom and two bedrooms and then upstairs. Um, and the house has gone to several makeovers through the years. And then my, my husband came along and he completely renovated it because you could walk across the living room floor and the furniture would rock. <laughs> and, but uh, my grandfather was a woodcutter, Grandpa Temple. Mm -hmm. He was a woodcutter. And he used to go around and he would graft people's trees so they would produce fruit because apple trees and trees like that, they had to be grafted in order to produce fruit. So they would plant trees and he'd go around and, because I found his journal wow. where he grafted wow. so many trees for Lehman and so many trees for this neighbor and so many trees for that neighbor. And a lot of times, instead of receiving money, they'd barter for butter or eggs or whatever they had, milk, whatever they had on the farm. And uh, the women would bake bread, and they would have always have eggs that mm -hmm. they would trade for things. So gra is that when you, I mean, cutting it, trimming it? Is that what grafting is, or grafting bark? They, is it? they yeah. graft a small limb. Yeah. They cut into it, and they affix yeah. it in there, yeah. and it becomes part of the tree. And I don't know why it works that way, but it's the old method of, because if you just buy an apple tree, and it hasn't been, had anything done to it, it won't, it won't produce. Yeah. You have to graft it. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. And I don't know at what point, yeah. you know, what age you yeah. do, but or how it's done. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. 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 It was. It's funny that you know the place still had the old corn crib where they kept corn and stuff when I moved in there, and and as a relic from the older days, my aunt never tore down the old outhouse, so it was still there. She used to say she had the best view. And of anywhere, because she could look down over the lake. <laughs> My husband got rid of that. <laughs> but uh, it's it's always been kind of familiar. Even if I come home in the evening now, it's it's like I'm going back to the old place, you know. So it, it's it's been nice, and that's pretty special. I don't think there are a lot of people around today that can say that they, you know they have that connection to a place. Yeah, you know, yeah, connection probably to not. There, to you know, going back yeah. generations. Probably not. Yeah. 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 Now the place at the that sits at the intersection of school and pond, where the where the loves live, where or I guess um, you know, well, e Evelyn Love still lives there. She and her family. Bruce Carlin is her husband. So oh, okay, the moderator. Yeah. yeah, and they have well, they have eight kids, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, that was the house that my grandmother was born in, my Grandma Kimball, Grandma Jeannie, who was a Kimball. She was born in that house. That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, 
they've done some work on it, but it's it's pretty much it looks just like on the outside, pretty much like it did back then. And uh, corner of pond and school. Yeah, yeah. I got to check that out too. Yeah, it's right yeah. at the intersection. School runs right into pond. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's that's one of the oldest houses in the area. And uh, also the one where the Yankees live. That's an old house. When I was growing up, the house where the Yankees live and the house where the Carlins live, and then way up at the end, the farm where um, Apple... It's the Sweet Apples. Sweet Apples 1740. Live. Yeah. I went by that house that was the. That's yeah. where my grandfather worked. That was Lehman's farm. And he was a Boston banker, and he had bought that all the way down on that side of the road, all the way down to the lake. And then little by little he sold it off. He went bankrupt somewhere along the way, mm -hmm. came home and lived on the farm for quite a while. But um, when, I, when I grew up, none of those other houses were around, just the farm and the Yankees house and my house and the one across the street from me. Yeah. And yeah. The, the little house that the Pines still own but they don't live in it, the little house next to me, that was built by my uncles, Uncle Bert. <laughs> so it was like, you know, you, any direction I went, it was always, I, a relative always knew where I was, you know, so you couldn't, you couldn't get away with anything. <laughs> so that Sweet Apple Farm, the house that I'm aware of on Pond Street, so what did, what kind of a farm was that? It was that? a dairy farm. Dairy? Yeah. So cows and cows yeah. and chickens? Dairy farm. Yeah. And then he owned the place where the Yankees live now. And they had great big vegetable gardens down all the back of the house. Those huge vegetable gardens with um, blackberries and raspberry bushes built around the stone walls. That was always a farm. And then the place where the loves lived, you know, that's. And then long in later years, the little house where Sally Almy lives was built by a family called Coit. C O I T. Can you describe where that house is, since you know we might not the, know? Yeah. As you come down to Pond Street on School, if you take a left, the first it's a little dark house. The mm -hmm. first house on your right will be that one. That's yeah. where Sally lives. Yeah. And that was built by a couple named Coit, and they were world travelers. Coit. C O I T. Coit. Okay. And the house has always been a dark color. They had it black, and Sally <laughs> has prompt has painted it kind of a reddish brown. Mm -hmm. But um, they were they were very good. I remember them always as being old. I don't know, they must have been younger at some point, but I remember them always as being old. And they um, they would travel everywhere. In fact, I think in their 80s they were still hiking mountains in some place. Um, but uh, it was, you know, you didn't see much of your neighbors until like if something happened, they would Everybody would converge and help, and mm -hmm. and pretty much they're still about the same way. Because mm -hmm. a couple of times we've had medical emergencies or something, and they just come out of the woodwork to yeah. to yeah. help. Yeah. So it it was it was a wonderful place to grow up. Wonderful. And to come back, right? I mean, it's yeah. still it's still oh, yeah. lovely there. I, you know, I walked. I guess I looked like my parents, and I came home and I walked into the bank, and right away two of the women said. I know who your parents are. <laughs> and of course, I worked for Dr. Love, and a lot of his patients were. I remember Albert Aronian, who also grew up on Bear Hill. He came in, he said, I took your mother to the prom. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So uh, it was, it was I like Dr. coming home. Did Dr. Love come to your house? He, when I worked for him, he was still doing house calls. Yeah. And that was in the late 80s. Yeah. And eventually, he he did stop taking house calls, but uh, back way back, yeah, he did. Yeah. All the doctors did. Right, they all made right, house calls. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was a kid, they I can remember them. My folks didn't have the doctors too often, but I can remember when they needed it. The either the, at the neighbors or theirs, the doctor would come. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, of course they can't now, they've got so many patients they can't get away. But, but it's just a medical association thing, too. They just yeah. Decide, yeah, doctor, yeah. yeah, they're not allowed yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, I know Dr. Love had to stop. He's, but he he always, he, he'd reserve one day when he closed his office early and he'd go out and do his patients that couldn't get in, so, you know. 
In fact, when I worked for him, he st would still take a bag of apples of a copay. <laughs> They'd bring chickens and tomatoes and apples and all kinds of stuff into the office. We ate well. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a little more casual and relaxed back then. Mm -hmm. You know, it was... And Far I, less traffic, huh? That, yes. That's the thing about Pond Street now, those narrow, narrow winding roads. And people who live there must be accustomed to, accustomed to the road yeah. and the drive. And in the wintertime, it's like one lane wide. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's scary to drive around. Yeah. There, but it must but it, have not been like that because there weren't so many cars. Well, when I was growing up, it was a dirt road. I remember it as a dirt road. That'd be a problem in the spring, yeah, both, right? Both School Street and Pond Street, I remember being dirt roads. And... Uh, but yeah, there was there was very seldom. We'd be waiting for the bus out front because you never knew when it was going to come. The only time we ever took a bus was when I lived up there on um, um, School Street, and uh, we'd be waiting for the bus, and we'd be waiting out in the middle of the road or sitting and playing or whatever, because you if you saw one car, it was a lot, and it was usually a relative, you know. <laughs> That's great. You didn't you didn't <laughs> see very many cars, but. Uh, you know, if you came into town, everybody seemed to know everybody, and it was it was nice. But I get the feeling there were little sections of hot. You're the Bear Hill section, and then I've heard Woodville people talk about how well if you lived in Woodville, you wouldn't necessarily go downtown. Mm -hmm. So that was you know, a yeah, little village within the town. Yeah, people pretty much stayed within their village, so, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. yeah, we we had to go into town because we didn't have a store um, for general things like milk and bread and stuff like that, we could go down to Woodville. But, um, you know, every once in a while you had to go in and buy basic groceries or whatever, or go clothing shopping, and we'd go to Milford yeah. or Westboro. My grandmother liked Westboro. But uh, you didn't really travel around much. They did a lot of mail order. They had catalogs, Sears catalogs. They would order from them. Or... Uh, you just made do with what you had. You know, if yeah. the older kid grew out, outgrew something, it went down to the next one. Yeah. Or maybe your aunt or somebody, they had a girl a little bigger than you or a little smaller than you, and you trade clothes back and forth. So you didn't really, didn't do a lot of buying. You lived pretty close to the land, kind of self-sufficient. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. Yeah. I have nice memories of growing up in Hopkinton. Are you disturbed by changes that you see happening? A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of them, you know, I know is necessary. My mo my grandmother was very philosophical. She used to say, "We like it. Why shouldn't we think so other people would like it?" And she'd say, "Well, progress is progress. It has to, you know, because she remembers when there wasn't any cars." Yeah, I know. Think of the changes and, uh, they saw. Yeah, you because know, by the time she died, she'd seen people go to the moon. Well, what do you know? What year? She about when she was born and she when she died. She was born yeah. in um, 1881, I think, and uh, somewhere around there. And lived in Hopkinton for for all of her life. All her life on that street. Wow! And tell us her name again, so we can. Yeah. Laura Cheney. La Laura Cheney. Yeah. Okay. In the last oh, four or five years, she lived in Milford because the house burned. And she had to move. She couldn't. She had a bad hip, and she couldn't get around. So she moved to Milford, because I have a cousin over there. But um, all the rest of her life, her whole married life, she lived, and she grew up in right there, at the bottom of School Street, and then moved up the hill. So she went to the Bear Hill School herself. Yeah. Yeah. She went to the Bear Hill School. She went twice because she loved school so much, and she couldn't go beyond the sixth grade. So she went back and repeated it. You told me that earlier. Tell, yeah. tell everybody out. Why couldn't she go beyond the sixth grade? Back then, girls weren't supposed to go to school. They didn't think there was any sense in them going to school. In fact, her father was a little progressive in that he wanted his girls to get some sort of an education. A lot of girls weren't allowed to go to school. They were supposed to stay home, help, clean house, So it's probably 1890s? Yeah. 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 And then get married and have kids. You know, they weren't expected to... Yeah to uh, learn, but my, my aunt, my grandfather and grandmother Kimball, they thought it was very important to at least be able to read and yeah. write. Yeah. And uh, so her family got, she got to go to school and just, she finished the sixth grade and there was nowhere else for her to go. She went back and repeated the last three or four grades and then she helped the teacher. 
she was kind of like a she would teach, help teach them with the kids. Yeah, she a until she got teacher, married. Wanted to be a yeah. teacher. Yeah, yeah. And I remember my grandfather by that time was living in Hopkinton in the same area, and he walked by the house one day where she was born, and he told his friend, he said, um, "There's a little girl born in that house today." And I thought, when she grows up, I'm going to marry her. And he did. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so uh, it was, it's kind of, a, kind of a fun thing that we... I asked him about it one time. I said, did you really say that? And he said, oh, yeah, I knew right then. <laughs> wow, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, we have at the library, there's, there's a few pictures of Bear Hill School, probably, probably in the 1890s. And there are little kids posing out front. Um, some that don't have shoes, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you must have first... seen those photographs, right? Have yeah. you seen them? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, you got shoes once a year, and, and most families had a shoe shop. In fact, the temples had a shoe shop that they would make shoes for the people around. And uh, the the dresses were homemade for the most part. The shoes were homemade, and you got one pair a year. And if you didn't wear them out too much, the next person got them right after you, the next kid. Yeah. And, uh, but sometimes there weren't any. There were shoes for church, yeah. not necessarily for every day in school. Yeah. Wow. And a lot of the boys had to go home afterwards and help with chores, and the girls had chores in the house. So they didn't dress up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. That's great. That's great. You think we're done, or do you have more? I, I think so. Okay, yeah, I, it's, I, it's funny when you're talking to people, you remember little things. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. We could probably keep going. You know, <laughs> I could help you remember. Yeah, I but I, I really appreciate that you talked to us, Karen. Oh, it was, no problem. Uh, yeah, connections to the past. I'm yeah. going to take a drive out that way and just. It's, it know. is. It's still pretty out there. It still is. And at night, you know, especially in the evening or the night when things are quiet, you can almost, I can almost remember the way it was, you yeah. know, get the yeah. same feeling. Yeah, I keep Let's it. sit down yeah. there on the lake. Keep it in, inside yeah. in your heart. Yeah. All right. Well, that concludes the interview um, with Karen Adelman, and I'm Linda, and um, January 16, 2013. And you probably have all kinds of genealogical notes, huh? The, oh, yeah. I yeah. have two filing cabinets and and uh, a whole shelf full of notebooks that I've collected. Well, terrific. That's terrific. All right, let me push this button.